okay. This is Lynn's weight loss journey, week number 22 and 23, and I made it to the 30 pound mark. Woo! (laughs) I just had to get that out there right away because it's pretty gosh darn exciting because this stuff, when we think about, can I lose weight? There is so much weight with the concept of losing weight. It's not only what our desires are, but we are hit all day, every day with all kinds of marketing messages, making us feel like we're not awesome already, making us feel like something's horribly wrong with us. And and then we're, then we're hit with a bunch of messaging on the other side that basically says, okay, well, let's go against that. And let's just say, yippee skippy, I don't care what's going on. I love my body no matter what. And if you ever are dissatisfied with anything in your body and you think about wanting to change anything, then you are evil and bad and vain and wrong. It's like, oh, oh my gosh, I can't even believe how quickly and smoothly all those words come out of my mouth when it comes to how frustrating this topic is and how we are just sold a bill of goods. And then you're sold a bill of goods by people who are saying there's a bill of goods to be sold. And it's like, ah, yes. So welcome. (gasps) Breathe, Lynn, breathe. (laughs) Breathe. It's going to be okay. (laughs) Okay. This is week number 22 and 23. Report out what I'm going to do this week is... A little bit of summarizing over the couple of weeks, but more talking about what makes a 30 pound weight loss possible for somebody who spent years quite desperately wanting to make this happen. What made it happen for me at this point in my life? What made it so I could do this, not just in a way that the scale number goes down, but in a way that I feel like the big question I ask myself is, is how can I do this in a way where I actually like what I'm eating and I'm not sad about what I'm eating and I don't have anxiety over going to social issue, uh, social issues. Look at that Freudian slip. <laughs> Clearly, I have social issues. Uh, You know what I mean. And I don't have um, stress over things that are in my kitchen. And I feel like I have some confidence that this is something I can do for the rest of my life. And I ask myself the question, am I going to have to be hungry? I don't want to be hungry. In fact, I've heard weight loss specialists say, you just got to get used to a certain amount of hunger and you just got to be okay with being hungry. I, that, you know what? I, I, I'm i 50 years old. I'm 50 and a half people, 50 and a half years old. I got a lot of years left and I kind of refuse to live it the rest of my years feeling like I have to be obsessed about what I eat. It's just not the life I want to live. Like really, I'd I'd rather have a hundred extra pounds on me than spend the rest of my life, you know, having to th- like worry about you know what I'm eating and and feel like you know I'm being judged or judging or like oh yeah yeah I know I'm preaching to the choir here. So let me pause just one moment and turn towards the individual, maybe this is you, where the topic of weight loss has always been hard. Just the words weight loss gets your brain going like my brain just went here in front of my microphone. And that's just the beginning. I mean, it gets even worse and darker from there. Yeah, I want you to know you you are already awesome as you are. You are a valuable human being. You have value on this planet, on this earth. You can right now, before you make any change in your life or even think about thinking about it, 
You can sit up tall. Yeah, go ahead and do that right now with me. You can sit up a little bit taller. You can breathe and tell yourself, hey, I'm awesome already. And I am a worthy person already. I am worthy of love. The love I receive in life is not dependent on anything around my physical being. The connections and friendships I have has nothing to do with whether I'm skinny or tall or short or hairy or bald or fat or whether I shave my armpits or don't shave my armpits or whether I shave my head or whether I grow a mustache or whether I keep my face cleanly shaved or have a man beard or whatever, like nothing, whether you're employed or not, or have chronic illness or not, whether you have vision or not, or, or can see, or whether you're visually impaired or not, it does like you are amazing already. And if you think about the planet and the earth and take two seconds to think about dirt We don't even know what dirt is. Like what even, like where did dirt come from? Okay, it came from erosion from this or that, but where did that come from? Well, it came from, you know, the magma and the rocks and the volcanoes. Well, where did the volcanoes come from? Well, they came from down in the core of the earth. Well, where did the core of the earth come from? I mean, this gets deep really fast. Just to show you, you are not your body. You are amazing. And this is stuff I tell myself. This is part of the stuff I tell myself over and over again. I am amazing. You are amazing. And at the same time, at the very same time in the very same hand, we can make the choice to say yes, 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 and I still want to get stronger and I still want to weigh less so that I have more freedom in my body or so that I have more strength. Or maybe you want to get stronger and weigh less simply because you think you'll look better and that's just where you're at. Totally fine. You get to choose that and nobody has any business trying to tell you what your motivation should or shouldn't be for this. Not even me. How much you weigh and your decisions around your health and your fitness and what you do with that, that is your business. It's not my business. I honestly don't go around judging people and saying like, oh, oh, something's wrong with them. They're bad. They're evil. You know, they, you know, look at them and look at what they're eating. Like, no. I don't do that. I don't do that because, well, one, because I'm just too busy too. (laughs) I'm like, really? Pause, Lynn. Why do you really not? Partly because I'm, uh, yeah, that. And because my whole life and my my religious upbringing and background, and those of you who've listened to some of my podcasts, you know I'm not particularly religious right now. But I was born and raised to see people's spirits and see people's souls and see who they are. And that's, that's what's important. And so I'm here to help anything I can do to help you with whatever goals you have. Okay. Wow. I did not script that at all. It just like blah, came out and is sitting on the table there. All right. There we go. I don't know. Is it a monster? Is it slimy? Is it a cute little puppy? Maybe it doesn't matter. Okay, yes. So week 22, week 23, I lost my 30 pounds. I got to that 30 pound mark finally. Now, couple of things about the snapshot of this moment. Part of the reason I'm doing this journaling and this logging is I want to do a snapshot. So you can see this is where my mindset is right now at the 30 pound mark. One, I'm more passionate than ever about all this. I'm excited. 
I also know that my energy and excitement around this is very different from the trepidation and dread I had around the very beginning. And I'm beginning to realize that the work I did in week zero, so if you go back at these podcasts, there's a week zero podcast. The work I did in week zero was critical and the key to my success. Had I not done that week zero work, which for me took about three years (laughs) to do, I call it week zero because we're like, this is everything kind of we got to start looking at and doing before you get to week one of weight loss. Everything I did in week zero to set up my life, prepare my life, get this to where I can really do this with confidence. That now that I'm 30 pounds in, I'm realizing that is a huge, huge key. And there's a lot there. So I did a thing, you guys. You guys, you guys, I did a thing. I've been talking to anybody and everybody who listened to me about this journey of mine, in part because I'm a woman and as a woman, we don't like to talk about our weight. We don't like to say the number on the scale, blah, blah, blah. You guys know that. So, so I did a thing. I took that week zero list and made a week zero checklist for y'all. That's right week zero checklist. You can go check it out right now. I put it on my website. I made it super duper cheap. And then I marked it down to even cheaper than that. This thing costs a, less than a latte. So if you ever buy coffee, skip one and one coffee, get this, this, this download. It's there. We'll talk about it more later. I don't want this to be a commercial, but I really want you to know it's a valuable resource. I did it for me. And then I thought outside of the box. I took my weight management specialist certification materials out again, re-looked at all them, added a few other things that I think would be applicable to folks that maybe weren't applicable to me, put it in there. And now we have for you a week zero checklist. So to access that, just go to couchactive.com forward slash zero, and you can get the checklist. If you're one of my current clients and, um, technology is an issue, just email me, say like, hey, help me get the checklist. Okay, so that week zero checklist, all those things were critical around getting ready to be in a place to actually succeed. So that was a big part of it. Another thing that has been a big part of it is my hunger and eating well in a way that manages my hunger cues. So I'm not hungry. That's part of my thing is, I I mean, sometimes I get busy and I get a little hungry and I'm like, oh my gosh, I got to eat. Not like that at all. No, to make it so I don't ever want to be in a position where I think, oh, I'm hungry. I need to just sit here and suffer because if I don't and I eat, I won't lose weight. That is not a life I'm going to live. And there's times I've had four meals in a day because I was hungry, right? So eating in a way that helped manage my hunger cues was huge, huge, huge. This has helped more than I realized because in the last couple weeks, I've been able to go shopping. Like the other week I went to Costco and I'm walking down the Costco aisles and I actually was a little bit hungry. And I went through all the aisles at Costco to get my things and put in my grocery cart, I wasn't super tempted to buy extra crap. And I know when you're hungry, that's the worst thing to do is go grocery shopping because you usually end up putting a bunch of other crud in your your basket. But I got in my diet in a way that I like what I eat. It manages my blood sugars in a great way, not diabetic, but even if you're not, it's still important. And then the double whammy Usually my past history, even in the first 10 pounds of weight loss here, was to go through the checkout stand, buy all my things. And then, of course, yeah, you're right, the pizza and the ice cream. (laughs) I'm hungry. I'll have a slice of pizza for dinner. And normally, 
my first 10, 15 pounds, I would still get that piece of pizza. And I'd be like, all right, not the best, but this is going to be my dinner. I'm going to do this. It's all good. And I did. And it was all good. It was all fine. But now I am not craving the carbs. I'm not craving the sugar. It's legit freedom, freedom, freedom to be in a place where you're just not craving all that, which is so super awesome. So being eating well, 90 to 95% of the time, which means one to two meals a week are total wackadoodle. And I'm totally fine with that. I've had, you know, one or two meals a week where, you know, maybe my breakfast was the big old donut from the market. Like it's okay now and then, now and then. Now, here's an interesting piece too, is now that I'm 30 pounds down, that's kind of significant. I want to be more cognizant too of these non-scale victories that come up because if I could choose right now today, if I had to choose between weighing a hundred pounds more than I do today, but having energy and vitality or losing more weight or staying the weight I am today, but not being healthy and not having energy. That decision would be a slam dunk, baby. I would just go and say, yeah, I am going to live with energy and vitality and clarity of mind and have an extra hundred pounds of me. Absolutely. However, that's not my real choice. My real choice today is I can stay where I am or I can let it go and just eat randomly and go back and gain the weight. But I know that that path would not leave me feeling as good and I would be heavier and I would, it would be my, I would be in a body that took more work to get around. So that's one of my choices. Another choice is I could get really, really, really strict with what I eat and do masses amounts of weightlifting and eat masses amounts of protein and I could gain weight and gain muscle and turn into a repped bodybuilder. That's an option I have too. I'm not very excited about that option. (laughs) Not really liking either of those. I could also eat the way I am manage my life and continue to eat in a way that I enjoy, give myself some freedom to feel like I can live too. I mean, the whole thing is living. That's the thing. It doesn't really make as much sense anymore to be like, I'm I'm living and I'm not living. It's like, no, you, you know what I mean? Just being able to eat. But if I go out with friends and, you know, pizza is what served, I don't want to be, I like, the, I like to have the freedom of, you know, being able to eat the pizza, but not eat all the pizza, right? Because because I still want to go down this path of health and continuing to gain strength. That sounds like a great option. Another option I have is I could go down the path of eating disorder. Yeah, you already, yeah, I know you know, starve or binge and purge or all like all kinds of things. I could go down that path and it theoretically could, or any kind of a diet, I could be like strict keto or strict Mediterranean or, you know, strict, strict all vegetables or whatever, you know, all kinds of things. I could go down that path and have my weight go down even faster than it is today because I'm at what, 30 pounds in 23 weeks? Yeah, I could do that, but then I would lose strength and vitality. And very likely my nails would get brittle, my hair might start falling out, and my teeth might start having issues over time. I don't want that either. Yeah, so I think we see the picture here of how this all works and how these non-scale victories And really looking at what do you really want in life is important. So my non-scale victories right now is my stomach after losing 30 pounds 
my stomach is no longer in my way. I can bend over now, tie my shoes with no hooga going on. Yeah, you know, if you know, you know, you know. <laughs> if you know, you know, and if you have a friend who's never ever had any extra weight on them, you know they don't know what that feels like. <laughs> So that's a great, that's a great thing. It's not a little thing. It's a great thing. I can do deeper squats and it's easier. I can get my hips down lower because I have 30 pounds less on me. My clothes, okay? Now this just brings me so much joy and it feels, I want to say it feels a little shallow, but it's not. I don't care. I'm not, I'm just so beyond labeling things good or bad or worrying about it. I absolutely adore the fact that my sweaters are hanging on me and kind of baggy. And my bikini I've been wearing to the hot tub every day, well, it's getting a little worn out. The chlorine's starting to kill it. But besides that, my bikini is kind of hanging on me and it's a little frumpy because there's not as I'm not as big anymore, which is pretty darn awesome. I got into my batch of old clothes that were like four and a half years old that I haven't been able to wear in four and a half years. I got into those clothes, pulled them out. So I, I have like this whole new wardrobe again of things that are fitting. Um, and then, and then, oh my gosh, this is so silly. But one of the things I pulled out is I had two, um, a winter coat and two rain jackets, which in Seattle, yeah, pretty important really nice, a really nice winter coat I loved and two great uh, jackets, a sporty kind of jacket and then an actual rain wind, wind blocker jacket. Really nice, really expensive. They weren't that old. They freaking finally fit now. So I don't have to put in the money. So that alone probably saved me two to 500 bucks in jackets this winter. <laughs> So that alone made it worth like the savings I'm getting from that is is really great. Another non-scale victory is I am feeling stronger. I went on the sands. I went on a, a hike with a friend of mine. It was our fourth time doing this 10 mile hike in the sand. Um, it's actually a really cool hike. You go, um, it's uh, called the Dungeness Spit and it's on the Northwest corner of the United States in Washington. And it's the sand spit that goes five miles. The sand spit is five miles long. Skinny little thing, skinny little sand spit, five miles long into the Strait of Juan de Fuca and then five miles back. And I got my best time ever and the best strength ever. I mean, usually we do this hike and by the end, I am dying and my legs hurt and my hips hurt and my back hurts. And, and then I just crash, take a shower and crash and pass out. This time, I actually felt pretty good. And the, the, so the ability to do that, super awesome. So yeah, lots and lots of non-scale victories here today. Um, and, and preparing for the sand spit, I did a couple of six mile in the sand walks two days in a row. Like that was pretty awesome. So Another big enabler was not having alcohol in the house. I cannot believe how much that one has been a topic of mine, but that has been a big thing. Another enabler of mine is really counting and tracking and learning. If I eat, have a day where I'm just snacking, say it's a busy day, travel, whatever, and I think, oh, I'm just going to snack here and there. I'll just have some cheese, a couple of crackers, some nuts, you know, maybe some fruit. And I just feel like I don't eat very much. Tracking those kind of days or taking some time to has been really good for me because I cannot believe how much um, calorie density is in a lot of that food. And so that really helped educate me to say, okay, Lynn, you got you to gotta watch this. If you have five ounces of cheese and half a box of crackers and a little wine, like that's a lot, even though it feels like you're not really eating a meal at all. Uh, yeah. So there we go, friends. The one thing that is interesting to me is I've spent a lot of time in the last two weeks feeling stuck, 
feeling like I'm not making progress, feeling like the scale just isn't going anywhere and is just sitting there. And I find that fascinating because here I am announcing 30 pounds down with confidence that I'll be able to continue this journey of mine. And yet most days I feel like I'm not making progress fast enough. And I think that's my biggest thing is I have to trust the process, trust the process, trust the process, get educated, learn what I can, do the things in a way that I like my life day after day after day. And then the changes happen. I just rattled off a whole big highlight reel for y'all of all the changes that are happening, feeling stronger, things fitting better. All of that is happening. But if I did this whole weight loss journey in a way that felt kind of miserable, I really don't think I would have succeeded to the degree I have so far. And I'm still not all the way there. But I have my level of confidence right now is kind of like annoyingly awesome. (laughs) It's like, I really have a lot of confidence right now that I did not have at the beginning of this. Yet day after day, I still wonder, like, I'm like, am I doing it fast enough? Am I doing it fast? And then I look at the numbers. I'm like, yep, you're plodding right along, Lynn. Yep. And look, you're tracking to meet your goal before the end of the year. And you're going to blink and it's going to be the end of the year and you're going to be there. So yeah, that's kind of an exciting, exciting thing. So Let's take a look at the actual numbers. When we started two weeks ago, I was sitting at 153.2. At the end of that two weeks, I was down at 151.0 for a total two-week loss of 2.2 pounds which made a total loss so far of 31 pounds, which is kind of like the weight of a carry-on suitcase for the airport. (laughs) In fact, yeah, I have another trip coming up here. I'm going to go to Alabama soon and visit my son again. And I'm just imagining like the weight of an entire carry-on suitcase is what I have lost that's crazy. Like, where does it even go? Like, what the heck? They say you breathe it out. They say you exercise it, burn it, and then it breathe, it breathe, you respirate it out. Like, what? I don't, yeah, it's, it's pretty great. So, so there we go, friends. Ah, yes. And if any of you have children or grandchildren that are like 30 pounds, Yeah, you like ask your, you probably ask your grandchildren or your children, you know, if they weigh 30 pounds, you'd be like, yeah, that's how much I've lost. (laughs) Yay. Okay. Next couple weeks, October 2 through 16, I will include another trip to Alabama to visit my son at college. So exciting. I am hoping to see the 35 pound mark, but I don't know. I've never lost five pounds in two weeks before. So I think that's where I get, I think that's where I get all jumbled up is I think, oh, oh, in two weeks I can lose five pounds, but really I'm only losing a pound a week. So, um, so I need to be realistic, but I always do that. Set my mark too high every single time. And I'm okay with that. So that's what I got going up there. So there we go. So, oh my gosh, so thrilled. 20, what was this? 23 weeks. 30 pounds, 31 pounds in 23 weeks. Yeah, no diet pills, no fat burners, no other crud, no meds, diet kind of med stuff. You know what I mean? If you know what I mean, you know what I mean. If you don't know what I mean, you don't need to learn about it. Um, (laughs) Unless you're working with your physician, which is a very, very different thing, by the way. If you're working with your physician, um, uh, around this. It's very different. Yeah. But you already know that. I haven't cut out any food groups. I've eaten it all. For the longest time, I was gluten-free. I've been eating bread. Not a lot. Yeah. 
pretty exciting stuff. So let me go back then to that week zero piece. Yep. If you are interested in seeing more and seeing the actual checklist of the week zero work, what do we do before we even get started? Head on over to couchactive.com forward slash zero, Z-E-R-O, couchactive.com forward slash zero, Z-E-R-O, and you can um, get a hold of your copy of that week zero weight loss checklist. It'll be very likely a game changer for you. So, alrighty, friends. There we go. We'll see you soon. That's couchactive.com forward slash zero Z E R O, or just head over to the homepage of our website. I bet you it's still there. All right. Take care, y'all. Bye bye now.